This is amazing. What if you can create two chess player agents and make them play with each other? It's like two robots playing chess with each other. And what if we can do this through Autogen, a popular agent framework? That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone. I'm really excited to show you about Autogen chess agents. These are robot agents which can play chess with each other. I'm going to take you through step by step on how I did this so that you can do it and extend this further. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and stay tuned. Coming to Autogen, it's a popular framework to make agents to talk to each other to complete a task. So in our case, we're going to make two chess agents going to play with each other and we are going to have a referee agent. The chess player one agent will tell the referee agent what move to make. Similarly, the chess player two agent will tell the referee agent what move to make. Accordingly, the referee agent will make the move in the chess board. Now we are going to see how we can code this and make these two players play with each other. As a first step, create virtual environment and activate it. Conda create hyphen and autogen, Python equals 3.11 and then conda activate autogen and click enter. Next export your OpenAI API key like this and click enter. Next pip install OpenAI, PyAutogen, chess and python.env and click enter. Now we are going to create a file and open it. Inside the file, import chess, chess SVG, autogen, system and OS. Then we are importing different data types. Next we are importing default dict. To do that, first we are going to add the system message you are an AI powered chessboard agent. Translate natural language into legal UCI moves. Reply only with UCI move string. UCI move is universal chess interface moves. Now we are going to create class for referee agent. Class referee agent. As we've seen before, what this referee agent will do is receive the response from the chess player agent and then convert that to UCI move. This UCI move will be moved in the board. So this referee agent is manually moving the items in the board. Then for reference, we are printing that on the screen and then we are saving that move if it is a legal move. If it is an illegal move, then we'll return with an error. Finally, we are saving that as a SVG image in the moves folder. That's it. Now we have created a referee agent which takes the input from the chess player and converts that to UCI move and make a move in the chess board. If there is any error, then the referee agent will respond back to the chess player agent saying that move is an error. So now we are going to create the chess player agent. We are giving a prompt template. Your name is the chess player name and you are a chess player. You are playing against the opponent name. You are playing as a color, whether it's black or white. You communicate your move using universal chess interface. You also chit chat with your opponent when you communicate. You should ensure both you and the opponent are making legal moves. Don't apologize for illegal moves. This is a system message template. Now we are creating the class chess player agent. So the main thing we are doing here is customizing the autogen assistant agent. So these are the steps to customize. So even when you create any agents, you should be aware that you can customize your agents. Here we need to customize our agents because the response need to be in the UCI move and all the chat is regarding chess. And here we are registering two reply. One is about the chess player making what move they are making and another response back to the referee agent. So if you see this register reply calls the reply for player. So as a first step, the player need to make a move. So this step will trigger this function to make a move. In the generate reply for player function, the generate reply will send all the previous messages plus the current state of the board to the large language model and the large language model will respond back saying which move to make. Then that message is passed to the referee agent by initializing the chat. There will be a conversation with the board until a legal move is made or max allowed. That's it. So as a quick overview, we created the referee agent which stores the list of moves and also it initializes the board and also it makes the move in the board. And finally, it saves that as a SVG in the SVG function. In the chess player agent, first the chess player agent will try to make a move based on the previous messages and the current board state. 
then that message will be passed to the referee agent to check if it's a legal move or not. If no more move can be made, then that will be passed to the generate reply for board and it will end here. Otherwise, it will keep on continue till the max turn completes or until there is no more move to make. Now we're going to mention the max turns, initializing the board, then initializing the referee agent. The board is passed to the referee agent. Next, we are creating the player number one, player black, color black, referee agent, passing the referee agent max number of turns and the temperature and the human input never. And we are creating the player white with color white, referee agent, max turns, LLM config and human input is never because these two agents are going to play with each other without any human input. Now we are going to initiate the chat by passing the player white and the message is your turn. So black player is telling to player white, it's your turn to start first. As we have seen, we have created chess player agent, chess player agent two and the referee agent. And now we are going to start running the code. In your terminal, python agent chat hyphen chess.py and click enter. You can see it's your turn. Now we can see the player white tells to player black what's moving, e2 to e4. Then we can see the knight get moving here. And then the player black moves the knight here and it goes on till the end. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you how the chess has been played in a Jupyter notebook so that you can see the picture. Now we have moved that to Jupyter notebook with OS Environ OpenAI API key, mention that API key here. And also one more modification, just comment this out and add M and also the display. This will show the chess board in our screen. Now I'm gonna run this code, click run all. Now you can see E4, E5, NF3, NF6, and this will keep on going. Make sure to keep an eye on the OpenAI cost because it might cost a lot if you try to make this play for a long period of time. So I'm going to stop this. Let me know in the comments below what was the outcome, whether player one wins or player two wins. I'm going to create more use cases like this for Autogen. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching.